We on? We're on. Hey, uh, I'm going to ask for a special request today. If you guys can help me out, uh, we want to say hi to our brothers and sisters that are gathered online. Yeah. And Good morning. My little brother uh, watches online on a regular basis, and we want to. Uh, I want to pray for him today, if that's okay. I want to pray for his family. Uh, if you guys could could pray with me, just just in starting here as we get started. And I'm going to send it to him so he'll, he'll just know and agree. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your healing touch. Yes. I'm asking, Lord, that you would just heal my little brother, uh, that you'd heal his entire family, Lord, from head to toe. Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit just to be surrounding them even now. And I praise you, Father, for being a God of health and strength and restoration. I pray that you would breathe life into each one of their lungs, that whatever virus or germ or whatever it is that's in the way would just be put asunder, and that your Holy Spirit power would just prevail, Lord, over yes, all of Lord. this. So I thank you ahead of time for health and restoration, and we're giving you all the glory for it, and we ask it in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. I love my little brother. I love you, Matt. He's a, he's a, good, he's a good brother. Um, Let's just say hi to our people that are gathered online, if you don't mind. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. everybody. God bless everybody for being here. It's, it's good to be in the house this morning, isn't it? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, there's so many people that uh, we, we are praying for. Uh, we're praying for restoration for some other brothers and sisters that, that, are, that are battling illness, uh, too. Um, and be sure to check your prayer list on that, too. Uh, that's in the bulletin for a reason. Be sure to pray for them. Uh, if you want a copy of that, by the way, if you're online, you're looking for a copy of the prayer list, uh, send us a private message. We can actually send that out for you to, to pray over them too, okay? Uh, so just let us know. Uh, but we are here, and we're going to explore the Word together. Are you all ready to do that today? Yeah. Okay. Is it yeah. okay? I don't know if you're ready or not. Are you ready to do that today? Yeah. Yes. 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 If you have your Bible, I'd ask you to bring that up. Just, just hold it up. We're talking about what a privilege it is to have the word of the Lord today. There you go. Some of y'all got bigger Bibles than others. It's kind of weightlifting going on here. That's good. Hold it up here and say this with me. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you. May it speak to my heart today. Amen and amen. And our word comes from Mark chapter 12 today. If you have your Bible, open it up to Mark chapter 12. I cheated. I already had it marked right here for me. So uh, but Mark chapter 12. Looking at uh, verse 41 is where we're starting at. Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 41. Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 41, we read the following. That Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put, and he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. And calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in everything, all that she had to live on. May God bless the reading of his word today. If you know the Lord's Prayer, I'd encourage you to pray that with me this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you, Lord, that you've been answering prayers. We've been praying for those that are sick in our number, Father. I pray that as we come today, that you would just speak to us through your very word, that you would say what you want to say, Lord, that you would just uh, open our eyes that we may see, open our ears that we may hear you, Lord, and that you would speak very clearly to us and tell us exactly what you want to say, Lord. We want to hear from you this morning. We praise you, we thank you, and we love you. We ask your blessing on this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. <laughs> now, we've been focusing on things. Last week, we started focusing on, what was that word? 
focus. What we focus, what we focus on. You remember there's an L word there. What was that? Love, right? We're focused on love. We're focusing. We're training our vision because we, we understand that the world distorts stuff. They distort a lot of things. And we want to make sure that we are focused in on what the Lord is telling us about these subjects because we don't want to be dis, di, you know, di, disillusioned. We talked about disillusionment in Sunday school. We don't want to be dis, disillusioned about what uh, this thing is actually supposed to be in the name of Jesus. So we focused in on love last week. And today... We're continuing our series on focus, and we're going to talk about a very sensitive subject. Uh, you know, hold, hold your neighbor's hand if you're close to them, and look over at them and say, it's going to be okay. Lee's, Lee's talking about, I'm talking about giving today. Is everybody okay? Lee's talking about giving today. I, I hope everybody's, everybody's still here. We're okay, right? Everybody's online. Everybody's still here, right? Right off the bat. I need to throw some things out here as we start talking about giving, okay? okay. And I want you guys to, to hear this, okay? And catch this, right? I want you to understand that, that I am blessed to pastor a very giving congregation. Each one of you are a very giving person. You're very giving people. And the past few years that I've been pastoring, I've seen the, that giving in action right here in this church. Uh, the this, this, this sign is new. The roof is new. The heat pump is new. That doesn't happen unless people give. Okay? You all are a giving church. We have met our budgets every single year. It's not a bragging thing. It's a, it's a testament to the diligence that you all give. We, we give to the World Evangelism Fund and missions. You all are a giving people. Look at your neighbor and say, y'all are giving people. And you're a blessing. And you're a blessing. So, so it might be it might might have actually come up in your mind to say, well, if, if if we're giving people, Lee, why are you talking about giving for? We understand. We understand. We understand about giving. Two reasons, okay? Two reasons that we do this. Because the Lord Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, he talked about money a, a lot. A lot. How many of you know that? He did. He talked a lot. And he didn't have a penny to his name. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? He came into a family that was not well to do. And yet he talked about money so much. What do you think that was? Was it for him? Of course not. It's for us. It's for us. He talked about that a lot because he understood that money can corrupt, didn't he? He understood that. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He knew that. And he wanted us to be on guard. You know who else understands that money corrupts? He, he's kind of a snake sometimes. Sometimes he's an old mangy lion. Sometimes I don't think he shows up to your door with, with horns and a pitchfork, but that old devil, he's nasty about that. He has, he has led a lot of people astray when it comes to the subject of money. And honestly, you don't have to look any further in the scriptures than the person of Judas. Wow, what a tragedy there. You don't have to look any further than Judas. He himself was a disciple and yet it tells us in John chapter 12, verse 6, that he helped himself to the money bag. He helped himself to it. This is a man who walked and he talked with the Lord Jesus himself in the flesh, and yet he turned his back on him for 30 pieces of silver. Oh my goodness. Now I'd like to tell you that we as Christians, uh, we, we are immune to the wiles and the love of money. I'd like to tell you that. <laughs> but a quick glance at the world that we live in seems to tell a different story, doesn't it? It does. And I, I would dare say that these words, celebrity, millionaire, and pastor, should never go together. Amen. Ever. And yet this is the world that we live in. This is the world that we live in. Mm. We need to be on guard. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. I don't want that for anybody within the sound of my voice. I don't want you to fall into that snare. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, that you cannot serve both God and money. That's what he said. So with that in mind, you know what we're going to do? We're going to focus. Somebody look at your neighbor again and say, we're going to focus. And what are we focusing on so we can guard our heart? We're going to focus on the subject of giving. We're going to focus on that because done in the right way, giving is another area of surrender in the life of the disciple. It's actually a form of worship. Did you know that? 
It's a beautiful thing. It will grow you. It will grow you as a disciple. It will grow, grow you as a child of God. And it's an essential part of our life here in, the, in this life that, that God has blessed us with. Now, churches, they, they, the power bill doesn't pay itself for free, does it? Yeah. It's part of it. It's a necessity. But we have the opportunity to give, to give. And as we do that, God blesses, doesn't it? Don't ever forget that. God blesses that. So our source text today, we see that Jesus is watching this crowd. He's watching this crowd put in money into the temple treasury. And I am reminded right away that the Lord sees it all. He does. He sees it all. He sees what we give. He sees what we don't give. And if you don't believe me, just ask Ananias and Sapphira, okay? That's Acts chapter 5. Ask them. Every bit of money, beloved, every bit of money and resources that we are blessed to have in this life, you know who is made possible by? God. It's all a gift from him, all of it. You go When you go home and, and you turn off and on your lights, man, it's a gift from God. It is. You drive your car. We're not on horseback anymore, by the way. Unless it's recreation. That's a gift from God, right? Uh, when we have this air conditioning, all this stuff going on, we can go into the faucet and turn on hot and cold water. That's a gift from the bountiful hand of Almighty God. I read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It says, But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. How many of you know that God still provides for us? He does. He, is, he blesses us more than we deserve. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed nation. We have a better standard of living right now than they ever had in biblical times. Ever. It is God who produces and provides the resources. There is no such thing as a self-made man. What a frustrating term that is. There's no such thing as that. What an arrogant term. I'm a self-made man. Why? Because you went to school. Who provided your health for you to go to school? Who provided you to be born into this life that you're, that you're living in right now? There's no such thing as a self-made man. We have to remember that. And when we remember that it is God Almighty who provides, who gives us all of these things, it will affect how we give and it will affect why we give. We have to know that, amen? So let's talk about how we give. Very quickly here, let's think about this. How we give. In the source text this morning, it says that Jesus observed many rich people throwing in large amounts. And it says in the temple treasury, and I'm reminded of what Jesus said about how we should not give. Because Jesus talked about that too. When he was talking about money, he said how we should not give and he gives this example in Matthew chapter 6. He says this in Matthew chapter 6. He said, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Hmm. You know, a lot of that was, was directed at the Pharisees. A lot of that was directed at the Pharisees. And they had this habit of actually, I want you to picture this for a second. They would actually go up and, and give their offering in the temple. And they would blow a horn. Patoo, patoo. They'd go up there. I just think about that. You talk about tuning your own horn. Maybe that's where that saying comes from. I don't know. But they would go up and they would bring that offering. And just to make sure everybody in the whole room was looking at them. Patoot, patoot. My goodness. It's obnoxious. It's ridiculous. And, and it obviously was meant to direct attention at the giver and not at God. That's exactly what that meant to. And I read about that and I think about that. And then look at what Jesus says again in Matthew chapter 6. Now, he says, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Beloved, when we give as quietly and discreetly as possible, when we do it that way, we give in such a way that it gives God all the glory. 
That's the way we're supposed to do it. Because when we do that, there's no other attention being drawn anywhere else. It is just a conversation between you and God. And that's the way it was intended to be. That's the way it was intended to be. Unless you didn't hear this from, from me, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I don't want to know what anybody is giving, okay? It's very important that you understand that. I don't, I don't want to know. It's none of my business. It's between you and God. I, I want you guys to be blessed. I want you to give. I don't want to know. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I want you guys to have that conversation between you and God. And we find ourselves being quick to remind others about how much we've given, about what we've given. If we find ourselves in that place, then deep down, are we really wanting to give attention and glory to God or are we wanting attention for ourselves? Ooh, that's a tough question to ask, isn't it? Well, we got to go there. We got to talk about that. We don't want attention for ourselves. We want to give to God with an undivided heart, not a divided heart. You know who gave with a divided heart? That was the Pharisees. Remember, bringing it up here, patu patu. That's going to be everybody's word for the day, right? Patu, patu. We don't want to be a Pharisee. We don't want to be a Pharisee. We don't want to give with a divided heart. We want to give with a whole heart, a surrendered heart. And I think about that, the way that the Pharisees did that. And I want you guys to realize the Pharisees, they, they gave on a regular basis. What did, what did Jesus say about them? Ooh. What did he say about them? Did he call them good things? What do you call those Pharisees? Here, here's, a, here, here's just a poll out here. Let's see if anybody remembers from Sunday school. He called them snakes. What else did he call them? Whitewashed tombs. Oh my goodness, blind guides. He called them that. He even went as far as calling them sons of hell. Now, we have to be on guard against such things. We have to think about such things. And we have to realize that if they gave on the regular, and they did, what was the dividing part between this woman who gave very little and the Pharisees out there patooting their own horn. I got to think about that. And I would encourage you to read through the whole book of Malachi. If you get a chance, it's only like a few chapters. You'll get through it in probably 30 minutes. If you take your time an hour, really stew over it, then read it again. And then try to get it in here, okay? Not just in here, but get it in here. I'm going to read you a portion of Malachi because what it starts to talk about when we talk about giving, it gets to the very heart of the matter. Point to your heart today. When we're talking about giving, you know what we're really talking about? We're talking about the heart of the matter, okay? We're getting to the heart of this because what this is doing, what, what this desires, we're trying to give out of an undivided heart, okay? Malachi chapter 1 now, starting at verse 6. I'm going to read this for you. I want you to listen to this. This is God speaking. A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord Almighty? It is you priests who show contempt for my name, but you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? By offering defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you, says the Lord Almighty? Now plead with God to be gracious to us with such offerings from your hands. Will he accept you, says the Lord God Almighty? Oh, that one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would not light useless fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty. And I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations from where the sun rises to where it sets. In every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to me because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. But you profane it by saying the Lord's table is defiled and his food is contemptible. And you say, what a burden. And you sniff at it contemptuously, says the Lord Almighty. When you bring, and listen to this, when you bring injured, lame, or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices. Should I accept them from your hands, says the Lord? Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord Almighty, and my name is to be feared among the nations. It's powerful. It's a powerful text. It's a powerful book. If you, need, if you want to read it, 
it's going to get down to the heart of the matter of why we give. Why do we give, beloved? We must remember that when we give, it is the importance of giving with an undivided heart. Not a Pharisee's heart, not the patoot patoot heart, okay? It's one that's fo not, not one that's focused on a what's in it for me attitude. The world is full of what's in it for me. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of giving with strings attached. You ever heard that example? It's a lot of giving like that in the world out there. You no, know, give with the world you know, with the strings attached, and we're not supposed to do that. Not we're not supposed to give with one like one that's supposed to be blowing their own trumpet. We don't want the whole world to know about it, do we? One is supposed to be centered on giving when no one else is looking. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be focusing on honoring God. We're supposed to be giving in faith, knowing that the Lord is seeing you right where you're at. That the Lord sees you and he's going to honor that. And when you're giving in secret, you know what you're doing. You're telling God, I love you. And that's how much. That's what it is. It's just you honoring God with what you're doing and in the way that you're giving. Now let's talk about what we're called to give. Let's talk about what we're called to give. Uh, of course, if you read in Malachi, uh, typically they'll talk about it in finances. They'll say you know, the tithe means 10%. That's what it means. But I want to take it beyond just money, okay? Because let's look at it realistically. I want to emphasize again that this is between you and God. And Lee doesn't want to know, okay? Does anybody everybody get that? Lee doesn't want to know. Well, what if at this moment God is calling you to give something else? What if you don't have any money? That's very realistic in this day and age. Right now, you couldn't be completely without. What, what if you don't have any money at all? Well, maybe he's blessed you with a talent. Maybe he's blessed you with an ability. Maybe he's blessed you with a gift that you can bless somebody else with that nobody else can. And maybe he is calling you to that place out of a surrendered heart to give that for his glory. What if he's calling you to that? I want you to think about that. There's things that in our household that my wife has me pick up because guess what? I can pick up heavier things than my wife. Mm -hmm. Now, if God blessed me with the ability to pick up heavier things and I'm just sitting there, I'm like, that looks heavy, honey, and she's picking it up and I'm not doing it. <laughs> Am I doing what God has blessed me to do? He's given me the ability to do it. It's the same idea. And I want you to think about this. And I know how deceitful the enemy can get. Uh, sometimes we are blessed with abilities, sometimes we're blessed with gifts and talents, and the enemy wants to make it look so small and try to convince you, oh, you should never give that. Nobody's going to care about that. Don't even try. I want you to know that God has a habit of taking those things that might seem insignificant at first, and he will bless them beyond anything that you can even imagine. In prison, I'm reminded that Joseph, this is in Genesis, by the way, if you're taking notes, Genesis chapter, uh, in Genesis 40 and 41, if you want to read that story about Joseph, he was in prison. He was down to nothing, as Al might have said, but he was blessed with the God-given ability to interpret dreams. He had nothing else to give, not really. And Joseph, in spite of his miserable circumstances, he had a willingness to honor God with what he had. And you know what God did with that? He multiplied it, beloved. He absolutely multiplied it. God, uh, Joseph used that gift of being able to interpret dreams, and he helped Pharaoh out. And literally millions of people were saved from starvation because he obeyed God. That really happened. I'm reminded of uh, David. He was a shepherd boy. He wasn't always King David. OK, uh, for a long time there, he was a shepherd boy. You think he had a whole bunch of money with him? No, he had rocks, though. He had a sling and he knew how to use that, didn't he? And if you read about that in first Samuel, chapter 17, he couldn't even fit in a decent set of armor. He couldn't do it. But he had a few stones and he had a God given ability to use those stones and he used it for God's glory. And God multiplied that ability that David had, and David stepped out in obedience. And when he stepped out in obedience, Goliath fell. And when Goliath fell, an entire nation, a whole war was shifted when they saw Goliath fall. And David gave honor and glory to Almighty God. Amen? Little rocks. That's what it took. And a willing heart. And John chapter 6 Verses 1 through 15, if you're taking notes on this, there's over 5,000 people that Jesus tells the disciples, you give them something to eat. I don't think he said it quite like that, but he said, you give them something to eat. 
And even though they didn't really have the resources at the time, uh, the scripture said they had a, there was this young boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. That's what they had. And they gave it in faith and they had a heart to honor God. And you know what God did with that? He fed the multitudes. Amen. Fed the multitudes and they had 12 basketfuls of leftovers left over. So don't you tell me that God can't take the little things and bless them abundantly. What has he blessed you with? What has he blessed you with? Maybe it's money. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's an ability. Maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's something that he is calling you to give that nobody else can give. But you offer it up in Jesus name and God will bless it every single time. He does that. Hmm. It's part of our growing as a disciple. It's part of our surrendering as a disciple. And it's not always going to be easy. We'll be met with challenges as we try to step out in obedience. We'll be met with hurdles. But just know that he is with you. That he's with you. Another reason we give when in secret is because we know that he's with us when we give. We say everyone in secret when, when we give, and even if we don't have anything to give, and we're giving what we have, he blesses that. And he's there with us, ministering to us. And I'm reminded of this poor widow in the source text. It says a poor widow came and she put two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. That's all she had. She didn't come up there with a trumpet. She didn't go patoot patoot. In fact, she might have been made fun of by some of those patoot patooters. Uh, she might have been. But she gave in obedience. And she gave what she had. She wanted to honor God with what God had blessed her with. And the Lord Jesus looked at that. And he didn't look at the two pennies. He saw right here. And he saw what she was giving. And he blessed that. He blessed that. Her example, her example went on for thousands of years now. And we're still studying about it today. Now, if you had told her that at that moment, you think she would have believed that, you know, 2,000 years from now, people still would be talking about this moment. You think she would have thought that? Look at how God has blessed that, just that act of obedience. How much is he going to bless your act of obedience? i got to turn it personal now. We've been pointing at our heart this whole, this whole time. I want you to ask yourself this question. What, what is God calling you to give right now? What's he calling you to give? Maybe it's, maybe it's finance stuff. I don't know. It's between you and God. Maybe it's an ability. Maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's a talent that nobody else has that only you can offer, that God has blessed your hands to give. Are you going to give it for his glory? Because I promise you, whatever it is, whatever you offer up to him, if you offer it with an undivided heart, not a patoot patoot, if you offer it with an undivided heart, he's going to bless it. He's going to multiply it and his kingdom will grow and you will grow as a disciple. That's what he's calling you to do. So let's focus on that today. Really focus on that. Lord, what would you have us to give? I want you to think about that as we close in prayer. If you want to stand and let's close in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we, we, we praise you this morning. And we are reminded of the importance of giving. Lord, we know that we have received an abundance, a, a grace that we would never, we never deserve, Lord. But we know that you've given it to us so freely. We know that you tell us to freely give also. Lord, I pray that you would just help us to, to be the givers with that divided, that undivided heart. We don't want to be Pharisees. We don't want to toot our own horn or think about something else. We want to give you the glory in all that we do, Lord. So whether it is with a financial blessing, Lord, whether it's with a, t a gift or a talent or an ability, Lord, I pray that you would just help us to give that in a way that honors you all the way through. And Lord, I thank you for this precious congregation that already gives so much. Lord, I pray that you would just help us to stay away from the deceit and the lies that the world might throw our way, that the enemy might throw our way. Guard our hearts with your word, Lord. I pray that you would guard us and help us to continue to be the disciples you've called us to be. Lord, that we would focus on the way that you gave to us and that we would give back to you, Lord, as we're supposed to. 
I pray that you would help us to love like you want us to love, that you'd help us to serve the way that you want us to serve, Lord. We want to be your children. We praise you and we thank you, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give each one of you peace. God bless each one of you.